<laughs> okay, so welcome uh, back to Saturday Sangha. A nuestro Today, encuentro del sábado. Oh, but see, now again we have this issue of hearing the translation. Taitiesha, you have to uh, translate on a different channel or whatever it is. Do you have that worked out? Okay. Good. So here we are. And it's Saturday again. Sometimes it feels like one week goes by like one day. <clears throat> we were just here and now we're here again. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shigurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stop it am yena butale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Danati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutta Parakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatham Vitam Tham Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Paritana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitangscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nivishesha Shunyavadi Paschatyadeshatarine Pancha Kalpatar Ubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Nama He Krishna Karna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Brindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare we're having darshan of Shishi Pancha Tattva in New Shantipur in southwest Poland by arrangement of Bhaktina Amelia. Very nice to see them. Shishi Pancha Tattva Ki Jai. Thank you. So, okay, as usual, we have some singing to do and then some discussion of what we're singing and some show and tell. I think we have some more 
Uh, Yasa Puja offerings still. <laughs> and uh, we have some Bhagavatam discussion. And let's see what else, what else happens. And so, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur song series. Is Siri Peace and Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakura? Oops, now we're getting. Is this Russian translation? Somya Karani? Da, ya perivajo. It seems we're also hearing you on the English channel. Oh, you turned off. Okay. Uh, let's see now. How is this going to go? This is verse song number four, Bhajana Lalasa, from Srila Bhakti Note. Takur. Um, I guess it's going to be Ekta. Hari Hari. Hari Hari. Hari Hari. Hari Hari. Dana Pratigraha. Mitogukta Kat. Bakshana Bojana Dana Sangera Lakshana Echai Hoya Ihate Bakira Prana Dana Pratikra Mita Gupta Kata Bhakshana Bhajana Dana Something about <laughs> Sangera Lakshana Echai Hoya Ihate bhaktira prana Tava tatva na tatva na bhuji gyane va agyane asate eshava kori bhakti harainu samsari hoinu sudar rohile Hari Tatva Nabuchi Egyan Eva Agyan Asate Eshabha Kori Bhakti Harainu Shangsari Hoinu Sudure Rohile Hari Krishna Bhakti Krishna Bhakta Janne E Shanga Lakshane Adara Koribo Jahabe Bhakti Mahdevi Amara Vridoya Asane Boshibe Tabe <coughs> Krishna Bhakta Janne E Shanga Lakshane Adare Koribe Jabe Bhakti Mahadevi Amara Ridoya Asane Bosibe Tabe Yoshit Sangi Janha Krishna Bhakta Adra Duhu Sangha Pari Hari Tava Bhakta Janha Sangha Anukhana Kobeba Hoi Be Hari Yoshit Yoshit Sanghi Jana Krishna Bhakta Ara Dunghu Sangha Hari Hari Tava Bhakta Jana 
संग अनु छेबा हो आदे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे आदे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे आते कृष्ण आते कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे आते राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे आते कृष्ण आते कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम आते राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण आते कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे आते कृष्ण आते कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण आते कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे हरि गो हरि गो हरि गो गौर हरि गो निकाय गो हरि गो हरि गो हरि गो गौर हरे गो निकाय गो हरि गो हरि गो हरि गो गो हरि गो हरि गो हरि गो हरि गो हरि गो हरि हे दान प्रतिग्रह मित्र गुप्त कथा बोजन दान ओ लॉर्ड हरि टू ऑफर ए गिफ्ट एंड रिसीव वन इन रिटर्न टू गिव एंड रिसीव स्पिरिचुअल फूड to reveal one's confidential thoughts and make confidential inquiries these are the six characteristics of loving association and in them is found the very soul of devotion dana pratigraha mito gupta katha gupta katha confidential exchange bakshana means eating bhojanadan means giving food to eat shangar lakshan these types of or these uh, yeah characteristics these types of shangar h o i hoi these six are 
ihate bhaktir pran. They're the prana of bhakti. They're the life of prana. Over here it says the soul of devotion. <clears throat> the life of bhakti. Tattva na bujye. Jnane va ajnane. Ashate eshava kori. Bhakti harayinu. Shongshari hoyinu. Sudure rohile hari. I have failed to understand the absolute truth. And by practicing these jnane uh, agyane, either knowledge or ignorance, no, knowing or not knowing, uh, by practicing these six activities with non-devotees, ashate, eshab kori, knowingly or unknowingly, jnane va agyane, I have lost all devotion. Bhakti rahainu, bhakti, I have lost it. Thus, I have become a materialist, <coughs> shongshari. <clears throat> For me, you, O oh Lord, remain afar. Sudure rohile hari. Sudure, very distant. Rohile, remain. Mm. Krishna, <coughs> Krishna Bhakta Jane, E Shangalakane, Adara Koribo Jabe. The day I cherish these activities of intimate association with the devotees of Sri Krishna. That day, the great goddess of devotion, Bhakti Mahadevi, will ascend the throne of my heart. Amar Hridoy Asane Boshibe Tobe. Tobe then Boshibe will sit Asane on the seat on the throne, Hridoya of the heart, which heart? Amara, my heart. And then final verse, Yoshit Shangi Jana Krishna Abhakta Ara Duhu Shanga Parihari When will I give up the company of those who are addicted to women and those who are not devoted to you. Yoshit Shangi Jana Krishna Abhakta Ara Duhu Shanga Parihari. Parihari means giving up, giving up completely. Parihariya. Uh, at that time, Tava Bhakta Jana Shanga Anukshan. <clears throat> When kabe kabe va hoibe hari, when will I get the constant association of your devotees? Anukshan, kshana means a moment, and anukshana means moment by moment, continuing moments or constant. So tavabhakta jana shanga anukshana uh, all the time, constantly. Kabe, when? Va, hoibe hari. Oh, hari, when will it? When will it happen? When will I get this association? It's interesting. Um, first, he lists the six uh, types of exchange among devotees. 
dadati pratigrinati guhyamakyati pritchati bhunte bojayate chaiva shat vidha priti lakshana um, Bhaktinod Thakur, I think, very much likes the mm, uh, nectar of instruction uh, from Srila Rupa Goswami. And here he, he lists all of these and declares that they are the prana, the life of bhakti and then in the next verse tattva na bhujye not understanding uh, tattva the the truths or truth uh, of krishna bhakti knowingly or not knowingly gyane va agyane asate eshab kori uh, eshab these all of these, so all of these six types of exchange, I've been exchanging with asat, with, with the wrong people. <laughs> Instead of, in other words, uh, this is natural that we have these exchanges, uh, these kinds of sharing with others. And then it's just a question of who we are sharing with. And here Bhaktivinoda is emphasizing he wants to have these kinds of sharing with the devotees, not with others. Uh, and as he says, as a result of this um, asat sangha, then bhakti harainu, uh, my devotion has been, I have taken away my own devotion, sort of, uh, I've caused my own devotion to be removed, and I have become a samsari. Uh, we know the word samsara, uh, the repetition, uh, the cycling of birth and death, it's always uh, the 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 key characteristic of conditioned life is that it repeats. Uh, and a sang, sang, so sangsara is that life, and a sangsari is one who has such a life. So it's another way of saying a materialist. So he says, I've become a materialist. And as a result, you, Hari, O Lord, Remain, Rohile Sudure, you remain far away. Uh, of course, the Lord is not far away. He's very close. He's in the heart. He's closer, as the saying goes, closer than our eyelids <laughs> to our eyes. But he seems far away. And the cause for this seeming far away, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying, is um, not having these kinds of exchanges with devotees. Dana, Pratigraha, Mita Gupta Kata, Bhakshana Bhojana Dana. Mm. Yesterday we were um, watching and hearing one kirtan um, on YouTube, I guess it was, uh, from, must have been several months ago, or maybe it was more than a year ago, uh, at the um, one festival, uh, what is it called, the... Um, um, forgetting what it's called, this area, anyway, where Estonia and those countries are. They're having their festivals, so many devotees, uh, all together in this big room. And uh, it was so nice to see. And I was um, 
devotees were singing joyfully and I was thinking, um, it's been so long <laughs> since we've had that. It's been, yeah, it's been practically a year, a year uh, since I've been in such an assembly of devotees. And that kind of exchange, of course, we're we're substituting as best we can. We have a, have our Zoom sanghas and whatever, but uh, there's something missing about our all being together and uh, meeting and exchanging and yeah, um, sharing prasada. That's very much missing, isn't it? Krishna Bhakta Jani. Um, Ah, uh, yeah, this third line, this third verse is so nice. On that day when I will actually cherish these activities of intimate association with devotees of Sri Krishna, what will happen on that day? On that day, the great goddess of devotion, Bhakti Mahadevi, um, we say Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, and we sometimes identify Bhakti Devi as Rinda Devi, sometimes as Srimati Radharani, or both. In any case, he says Bhakti Mahadevi, uh, Amar Hridoy Asane Boshibo, hmm, will sit on my heart. In other words, uh, sit on the throne means she will reign. She will be in charge at that time. And then comes uh, the rhetorical question, Kobe, when will this happen? When will I give up the company of those who are Yoshit Shangi Jana? And of course, this is referring to the men attached to women, and it can, of course, be the other way around, the women attached to men. Mm. Krishna abhakta ara duhu shanga parihari, giving up. When will I be giving up uh, these kind of association? Tava bhakta jana shanga anukshana. And instead have your devotees sangha when will that when oh when will that day be mine as bhakti Manod thakur sings in another song kabe habe bolo se din amar yeah so we can this is a nice prayer we can re, um, have this mood of bhajana lalasa of longing for bhajana in this case bhajana in the company of devotees especially nowadays when we're all more or less locked up in our little cubicles. <laughs> uh, we can perhaps feel a bit more a sense of longing for devotee association than we might otherwise. Sometimes we might feel like, oh, let me be alone. And then Krishna says, oh, okay, you, you want to be alone? Okay. We'll make arrangement. You can be alone for so long. <laughs> and then we say, no, 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 I didn't mean for so long. <laughs> oh, you want, oh, okay, then. Yeah, so we have to be careful of our desires and preferences and wishes. Be careful what you pray for. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Oh, and before I forget, let us wish everyone a happy Chinese New Year. Especially the devotees in China. <clears throat> this is always a big celebration in China. Um, you know, they sort of any excuse to have a party. So they they make their Chinese New Year is usually going for about two, 
two weeks. <laughs> Isn't it, Prema Sarovara? It's like that, no? Raj. Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. About yeah. the two weeks. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. And this is the year, I heard this is the year of the ox. Yes. It's the yes. year of ox. And so what does that mean in pra what does that mean practically that it's the year of the ox? Uh, uh, ox means uh, strength, auspicious. It's auspicious. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dharma or adharma? Sorry. It's apparently dharmic, dharmic ox. Okay. Well, that's good. So happy Chinese New Year. Thank you so much, Gumaraj. <laughs> okay, what is next? I think today we have Taruni Saki in charge of our program. Yeah? Yes? <laughs> uh, of the program, not, but uh, hosting the, the IT instead of Dharma Gopta. So I don't know okay. the agenda, and I would like to apologize for any <laughs> inconvenience for the IT. Uh, Okay, so far we're doing fine. Um, Dira Lalita, are you managing things now? <laughs> oh, good morning, um, Hare Krishna. <laughs> but Hi, only, Lord. only um, just a little announcement for um, our devotees who will present today. Um, yes, puja offerings to you. Um, so that would be the Kesha Prabhu, Ganga Sagara, and I received an email. Uh, from one uh, about teen, or maybe she's initiated just before we started um, and her name is Amina and she would like to uh, also read her Vyas Puja offering she says she doesn't know if, if her Vyas Puja offering had reached you or not so she would like to read that as well so first would be a Daityesha Prabhu if he can uh, uh, tune in for, for to read Gurmadhi's Vyas Puja yeah. Maharaj, can you hear me? Finally, we can hear you, Jai. Oh, yes, so much. It is, uh, indeed, it's very nice that we kind of every week or every day, we call it as your, I mean, maybe an offering to you. That is indeed the, uh, I, I know it's something personal, but <laughs> but I think it's uh, very good that uh, I was keeping my, I, I didn't want to increase the expectancy because, uh, expectations, because uh, that was not the idea, but it's very good for me that I take every week or every day as your your Vyasa Puja in the sense that it surrender. So please accept my dandavats at your sacred lotus feet. And this is my first public homage. And um, I feel like offering Ganga waters to the Gandhis. I mean, it is you, my main inspiration and understanding and of this majestic praxis majestically simple also to decode material existence. So pontifex comes from Latin and it means a uh, bridge and uh, in order to cross this material existence and you are our living bridge, you are our embodied exemplar human behavior that we are accepting to follow. You, I was thinking of uh, when we met, it was in the 83, 84, that you preached in uh, Montevideo. 
And uh, I remember once we were in Rosario near the Paraná River and we were looking some surfers. Meanwhile, we were chanting something. And uh, you said something like, well, they make it look like if it were a simple activity, but it must not be that simple. And I remember that I came crossed arms and looking at your eyes, I said in a faked voice, well, the same thing happens to me with the heart of Christians, you know? <laughs> Which it is kind of, it maintains up to now my, uh, my, uh, my admiration, my admiration to to the ones that make it look like a simple, uh, say, sim uh, to accept. Uh, I had a, if I had a time machine, I would like to be here and now offering my gratitude and uh, with the simplicity of respectful, appreciative words like any of your disciples, which I am uh, learning to admire. So by, I'm, uh, I felt enthused by the uh, one go, by the 16th in one go, and I'm starting a club of my own of more than 16 in one go every day. <laughs> and uh, what uh, in my platform, or I think you were explaining Dasha, the other, the other last Saturday. Yeah, the position of senior devotees is that one, I mean, learns that the Lord is very much um, uh, tactful with our behavior towards other devotees, and He is not looking uh, to how fallen we may be. So I, uh, I, uh, I do not want to sound challenging, but I'm offering also for regulative principles and uh, I feel very much happy. So I have a little uh, present for you now, that is I'm taking uh, Robert Frost's a piece of a poem. And uh, it is, I shall be telling you with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Thank you very much. <laughs> Eternally indebted. Hare Krishna. Um, thank you, thank you. Now you mentioned uh, that, as you remember, it was 1983. We were in Uruguay on the I beach. Um, I don't uh, think no. I. I think the first time I came to South America was 1989 or 90. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah. Oh, that much. Okay. The end of the 80s, maybe. I'm not good at dates. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't at matter. All. <laughs> Some time ago. Yeah, I thought my, my first times in, uh, I took it as my first times in, in Montevideo. Mm -hmm. That means you are with me right from the beginning. That's my feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and here we are 
here we all are still. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you. Brahms. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank from, you. From far away, uh, Western Argentina. Yes. <laughs> okay. So next, Guru Maharaj, we have the uh, uh, Ganga Sagara. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, dear Taruni Saki will post her um, translation on the chat. And uh, she will be reading in German, as I understood, uh, Sonia Karuni. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, meine Erbietungen. Ich lese jetzt vor, weil es alles auf Englisch, das muss yeah. genau so sein, wie es ja. Schon okay. <lacht> äh, wofür bin ich heute dankbar? Ich danke Krishna jeden Tag, dass er so barmherzig zu mir war und ich dürfte dich treffen. Du hast mein Leben zum Krishna-Bewusstsein geändert. Du gibst mir jeden Tag die Kraft und starkes Glauben. Du hilfst mir, den richtigen Weg zu gehen. Den falschen Weg zu folgen ist einfach und der Mensch braucht nicht viel Mühe. Den richtigen Weg zu folgen kann ich nur mit deiner Hilfe und deinen Segnungen. Ich bin sehr froh, hier mit allen Devotis zu sein und meine Dankbarkeit dir auszusprechen. Ich habe auch noch nicht die Hoffnung verloren, dass du uns in Heidelberg bzw. in Meckesheim Tempel besuchen kommst. Wir laden dich herzlich ein. Wir warten auf dich. Hare Krishna, liebe Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, vielen Dank. Thank you. <laughs> I remember my, my, my good memories of Heidelberg are um, when I first came there and after, after three weeks in Stuttgart, and then Paris meeting Prabhupada, then coming back, then again, uh, then Heidelberg. And uh, the devotees obtained a small house for rent. Rohrbacher uh, Straße 31, I still remember. That house probably has been torn down by now because it was an old house at that time and it was made of wood and it was a single house. Anyway, and then uh, we had Kurfürsten Anlage 5. And that was a very lively, lively temple right next to the bus station. Uh, lots and lots of people, devotees came there and very nice Sunday feasts, kirtans. Yeah. <clears throat> Ich habe mein Herz in Heidelberg gefunden. <laughs> There's a song. Ich habe mein Herz in Heidelberg verloren. I, I lost my heart in Heidelberg. So I'm changing it to Ich habe mein Herz in Heidelberg gefunden. I found my heart in Heidelberg. Because that's where I <clears throat> first joined the, joined the devotees. Anyway, Hare Krishna. Thank you. So um, we're calling out now for um, Amina. This must be Minakshi Swamini. Oh, really? Hare Krishna. Oh, Hare is Krishna. it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm very sorry. I didn't know her other name. I apologize. Please. please. Oh, so <laughs> <I didn't know. laughs> okay. My basis is uh, dear Gurudev. Hare. And, um, I'm happy to have a chance to read for you my Vyasa Puja offering. And um, it's a little longer, so I, I don't know if uh, the waters will be disturbed if I take too much of their time. So you can mm -hmm. tell me, I can read one section, because it's four sections of uh, offering. We'll so, see how it goes. Uh, I think the, uh, the translators would be very grateful if you can read not too fast. Okay. 
<laughs> Good. Okay, thank you. I can start here. My dear Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisances of Glory Sushila Prabhupada. On this most auspicious time of Yasa Puja, I would like to offer you my occasional meditation. It's preliminary meditation to Archana, which is called Manasa Puja in worship of Guru, Gauranitai, and Radha Madan Mohan. My worship is split in a four section, trying to flow the order given in Pancha Pradipika book. By early morning, here it start. <laughs> By early morning, before any trace of sun in eternal Navadvipdam, I, Nitya Das, young Brahmachari, are waking up in my shed. And by walking toward self effulgent glowing Ganges, I'm remembering the Lord eternal pastimes. After taking bath in the glowing Ganges and marking my body with fragrant tilak from her shores, and dressing clean and new clothes, and start to perform my silent japa. There is no more beautiful place on Gat as the Ganges to come to completely immerse oneself in the sweet name of the Lord. By the trace of dusk, when the colors of transcendental sky start to get most amazing colors, and the atmosphere is spread with aroma of fragrant creepers, I can see you, my Guru Dev, approaching to the God by offering you dandavats and trying to show you my full gratitude and surrender to your lotus feet. I show you a place on the God which I prepared the day before and I'm getting ready to offer you all you need to have pleasant morning. I offer you asana to sit and wash your feet with sandalwood scented argya water from beautiful carved silver pot. After washing your feet, I offer you argy water mixed with auspicious grain kusha grass and flowers. I put some droplets on your head and are given achama mixed with clouds and rose water. I prepare sweet madhu parka and now I'm giving it to you to open your transcendental senses with sweet smell of honey, ghee and yogurt. After achaman, you're getting ready to give you oil massage. After oil massage, I'm bringing water from the Ganges and show you with this liquid nectar. By looking at the Ganges, you decide to have short swim and this gives me time to prepare breakfast for you. After ha have you been dressed, I give you some, some nice ornament, ornaments and sandalwood paste and offer you a new place to sit. With great devotion, I start to offer you incense and you're smiling happily and seeing me offering you lamp after. I'm bringing you a nice silver plate full of different fruits, varieties of some milk products from the local Kamadenu cows. While you are taking Lord Prasadam, I'm playing Veena and singing the Lord about Lord Krishna songs. After meals, you're giving Achaman from, from me and beautiful garland. And by showering you with flower of petals, I am offering in the mind everything else I have forgot to offer you. Now you are ready to make with me a long job walk toward the small village of Navadip on the shores of the Ganges. So this is the first section of the Manasa Puja. Um, it's uh, happening in eternal Navadip. And uh, now we were, now it's, if you want, I can continue the Manasa Puja of approaching to worship of Gornitai. And after that is the after that is the offering of Radha Madamohan. So if you want, I can continue, but <laughs> I don't know how is the timing going on. Yeah. Yeah, I think I yep. think we're we're not in a big hurry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. As we are walking towards the village of Navadit, from the distance we can hear a loud singing of Harinam and laughing of devotees. From the distance are two amazing, glowing personalities approached together with beautiful associates. On this point, we are both fa falling on the ground, offering our obeisances. By approaching us and we approaching them, Lord Nityananda is embracing you and you're welcoming them on the shore of the Ganga, on the bathing gut, and inviting them to take refreshing bath after the whole night kirtan. Lord Goranga and Nityananda are joyfully stepping and jumping over the steps of the gut, 
to the place we prepare for day worship a day before. You're offering them asana, and I'm bringing you scented water to wash their feet. As you wash their lotus feet, few drops of nectar finish on our head. After that, you, you wash their hands with arge water and offer them ashnat with rose petal water. I'm bringing you fresh mixed madhuparka from local honey, bananas, and yogurt, and they're joyfully refreshing them self with nectarian drink. drink. After Achaman, they are getting ready for bathing. You're helping lords together with associates to, uh, to, that I am carefully fold, and I'm carefully folding and taking cloth, cloth, uh, their cloth and ornaments. The waters are bringing huge conscious. I carry the water and you and your associates are baiting them with the long sound of conscious and roaring of hurry ball. As you bat them, they decide to go with associates to the Ganges and have some sports in the water, as me and you are preparing fresh clothes for them, and I clean the rest of the batting. After a lot of splashing and swimming and great fun in the water, Lord Goranga and Ityananda are coming out from the blessed Janavi and are shining like the suns, as we are covering them with the towels like the clouds to whip their wet bodies. You're starting to dress them in the fine silk clothes expertly, and you're giving them, you're giving me instruction what to give you next to not to break the flow of dressing. Uh, you're expert to dress in ornamenting and showing amazingly skill making turbans full of colors, clothes, and flowers. As they are dressed, you offer the nice seat, and in the small temple under the gut where I prepare all the items for washing as flowers, garlands, and lamp incense. With other associates, you're offering incense, and I'm running to the house of Sachimata to bring offerings of different varieties of food to offer breakfast to their lordship. We bring amazing hills of rice soaked with ghee and all kinds of vegetables and sweets for them. You're offering them plates and then started to take Vishnu Prasadam with great joy. After finishing all the remembrance I'm dis are distributed to associates and you are offering them water to clean them out and beautiful garland of fresh lotuses and betel nuts. As they're resting, you're taking harmonium and start to sing different songs described the love of Radha and Krishna. In this performance, I will follow you with the drums after satisfying them, we are offered them the rain of flowers and greeting them as they continue to their path with Harina group on the shore of the Ganges. So this is the, I'll probably stop here and uh, because the worship of Radha Mada Mohan is even much longer. <laughs> so then I'm, I will send you the, the last part of the worship and uh, yeah, and then praying to all Vaishnavas that um, this uh, Manasa Puja will come also um, more and more present in my mind. And I hope I don't make too much, <laughs> too much complications, but this is the way how I approach to Manasa Puja. <laughs> mm. Very nice. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, we often devotees forget that Manasa Puja is it's part of the process. Uh, we tend to think it's just some mechanical routine. First I do this and then that and then this and then that. <clears throat> offer this, offer that. Now I'm done. <laughs> uh, but and the, the deeper process is very much engaging the mind and uh, it's a meditation, as you've described. Uh, which was good to hear because um, uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm supposed to give a, a two-day seminar, or two hours, two hours, for the Pujaris in uh, Chopati and Govardhan Eco Village. So... It's good to 
get myself warmed up for that, so to say. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Guru Maharaj, I apologize. I've said first that there will be three devotees, but there is one more devotee who would like to present the read for the Asa Puja often. Mm -hmm. I apologize for that. I didn't know. But um, uh, her name is Iris, or Iris in the, I think she's from Slovenia. Yes. I would like to read it for you. <laughs> Iris, okay. Uh, there she is. I think she's in Aus Austria now. <laughs> um, we don't hear you yet, Iris. I think you'll have to unmute. Yes, there. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna to everybody. Sorry, my camera is somehow very old. <laughs> but I hope you can hear at least. Uh, shall I um, send my offering to the um, translating devotees in the general chat or what would be easier? If it's, con if it's convenient, yes, that would be nice. That yeah, I just post it, it's uh, two seconds, uh -huh. five. Ah, uh, there. Okay. okay. Dear Maharaj, uh, I have written this on 21st of December and sent it to Dira Lalita, but somehow later it got lost. So um, I would read it to you all and ask you for your good wishes and blessings so I can do it with my full heart. Um, Hare Krishna, dear Krishna Kshetra Swami, I offer you my try of humble obeisances. All glories to his divine grace, Shlira Prabhupada, all glories to you, and all glories to your wonderful disciples. First, I wish you transcendental sweet Vyasa Puja celebration in full connection with your exalt exalted spiritual master, his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada, and with your devoted dis disciples. Now I pray to his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Haridas Thakur, Srimati Tulasi Devi, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Sri Panchatatva, it was Gita Jayanti on your Vyasa Puja. Yes. Day. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Uh, Shri Panchatatva, Shri Giri Raj Govardhan, and Shri Shirada Damodara to offer you some words of glorification. A few months ago, I was really dreaming about you. It happened a few times earlier as well, but this dream was very special. Usually it happens only once in a year to get such mercy of you. In this dream, somebody chastised me. Afterwards, following another devotee, we found your holiness in assembly of Sadhu Sangha. It looked like uh, the room uh, in Radadesh where the uh, Radadesh mellows go on, um, on the top. Uh, you looked straight into my eyes. Surprised, I felt that you accept me as I am. It meant so much to me in a dream and also after this dream was finished. Besides, besides this character, characteristics uh, of yours of accepting people as we are, uh, I like many more of your characteristics. You are, in my eyes, so gently and softly speaking, so much that sometimes I even fall asleep <laughs> because of my lack to focus on your transcendental words. Um, 
You are giving open-minded and spiritual answers in your lectures. I like this very much. I like when you say, just do the needful in whatever capacity you can and always remember Shri Krishna. Or sometimes you say, good to know that you continue with sadhana as you are able. The magical number 16 keeps us safe. This is, these are really uh, your words <laughs> from your emails. Thank you also so much for your regular disciples Sangha Zoom meetings on Saturdays since April last years. Actually, I joined to encourage my uh, husband, but somehow I'm the one sitting here and he's asking afterwards what was going on. And sometimes he comes and he's listening. Uh, thank you for your personal approach and correspondence with so many individuals, also myself. Thank you for your silent but very prayerful and merciful Kartika Vrata 16 in one go. Thank you for full uh, inspiration for that and your blessings, which I could certainly feel during last Kartik. Thank you also for taking spiritual care of my beloved spouse and praying for us all, all for all for us all. I mean both of us, but also all disciples and devotees. I know that you pray for. Thank you for showing all of us balanced and healthy way of practicing sadhana, preaching, and living in general. Thank you for your kirtans beautiful kirtans, I must say, lectures, secret guests and writings, including your books and motivating us to write our articles based on Srimad Bhagavatam and holy scriptures. Dear Holiness and dear Maharaj, Hare Krishna and happy birthday, a bit late. <laughs> Now I would finish this letter with your own words again. Keep well and safe during this pandemic times. Rade Rade from your aspiring servant, Iris. Very nice, thank you, Iris. <laughs> and greetings to your husband, wherever he is. I'm in the room. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I must say that's the first time I heard it as a compliment that uh, I speak so smoothingly that uh, I put you to sleep sometimes. <laughs> it's not uh, only you. It happens also when I'm listening to Sachinandana Maharaj. <laughs> so I think it's my fault. <laughs> It was meant positive, certainly. No, it's, I appreciate it, yes. <laughs> All right, Hare Krishna. So, yeah, thank you all for your kind words. What to say? Um, do we have anyone else wanting to do any sort of show and tell? Any telling showing or combination of the of the two something from this last week um whatever whatever you would like to share um guru maharaj yes well i have written a little uh, poem uh it's a little bit clumsy but um that was um uh written a few, a few weeks ago when we spoke about um, when you thought of how to read Narayan Kavacha and to write a prayer. Mm. Yes, good. So would you mind me reading this prayer to you? Please. I'm hoping to improve my writing. 
So I'm looking forward to your feedback. I know it's a little bit clumsy, but uh, I, I've tried. It goes like this. Dear Lord, with your glorious and fun forms, you allure the spark of a soul. So hidden in the dark dawns, they come out, out crawl. By your light, please disperse the darkness, darkness of the soul that creates fear, the fear that scorches and blackens. I plead of you to disperse it, be forever near. Through the universe, you fly free. Please protect those who suffer. Begging for the favor of the wonderful V, please protect the weak and make them tougher. For all I know, my knowledge is light. Please protect the body and mind of those who are surrendered to the bright, star shining and refined. Star that has divine forms, forms that sparkle, I invisible and small, there to pray for protection from one with the magical smile. I dare to pray for protection of those I love now and dare to pray for all those who can't pray for themselves. Mm. Thank you, very nice. It's actually quite something to write poetry uh, in what's not one's first language, especially rhyming poetry. <laughs> Thank you. And I noticed, um, at least in the beginning, some, a kind of poetic repetition, which reminded me of, um, there's a particular type of um, poetry in Tamil language. I learned um, one of the Alvars, Nam Alvar, who wrote the main, um, he wrote the largest part of the Divya Prabandha mm -hmm. songs in Tamil. Um, it's, it's a technique, you can say, it's called Andadi, Andadi. And it's uh, taking at least one word or more than one word from the last line of four lines of verse. And it's repeating that in the first line of the next verse. And the effect is it's uh, very much, you know, it's like links of a chain. Like a chain, yeah. Yeah. And it has a very, very nice poetic effect. So anyway. I well, my know. poem was like coincidentally like that. I, <laughs> I didn't know this style, but I can look into it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. Anyone else, anything from wherever you are in the world? Okay, um, maybe a little bit of telling from my side, because uh, just a few days ago, Prema Sarovara sent me the um, printout of a book that I've told of before. We're in the process of publishing in China. Uh, called Advancing Across the Great River. <clears throat> and I've just been going through the English of this uh, to check the layout, make sure everything is okay before it's printed. And uh, just this morning I was going through, I think it's the final, yeah, the the final article I wrote, which is, well, advancing across the Great River um, with the help of Bhagavad Gita. 
And I just found one little fault <laughs> that I didn't see before. <laughs> so I'll have to correct that. Uh, one second. Um, so I th uh, this uh, this article is a, um, an attempt to make some comparisons between Bhagavad Gita and the ancient Chinese work, the Yi Jing. The Yi Jing uh, is a book of um, uh, it's for protect for uh, what's the word I want for anticipating the future. But it's also a book of wisdom. And uh, it's, it's uh, constituted of uh, what are called hexagrams of short and long lines uh, in different combinations. And depending on these combinations, different situations are anticipated or, excuse me, expected. So in one section of this article, uh, I call this section positioning oneself for higher wisdom. And I explain the whole context of Bhagavad Gita being in the Mahabharata and how we get opportunity to listen in on this conversation. Um, and that like the I Ching, this is a book of wisdom and it's intended for especially the noblemen, for the, for the kings. And I quote the verse uh, at the beginning of ninth chapter, Rajavidya Rajaguhyam, Pavitram idam uttamam pratyakshavagamam dharmyam susukam kartamavyayam. Uh, and I give a, a translation of that. This pure royal knowledge, this hidden knowledge is ultimate. It is directly comprehended, righteous. It is a perpetual great joy to be done. And then I refer to one of the hexagrams of the Yi Jing. And each of the hexagrams has a, um, a name. And the name of this hexagram is Guan, which means in this translation that I have, it means beholding. Beholding doesn't mean physically holding on to something. It means seeing, and especially seeing in the distance or having a, a broad vision. And uh, this hexagram is described, it's made up of uh, the trigram for wind on the upper part and earth on the lower part, trigram. There's three lines and three lines. They're either broken or solid lines and in different combinations, they indicate these different elements, and then you combine on top of each other <clears throat> and you get different meanings. Uh, and it's explained that this particular hexagram, Guan, the holding, forms an image like an ancient memorial archway. Uh, so you might imagine the Arc de Triomphe in Paris, or some big gateway like that. It has four broken yin lines on the top, sorry, on the bottom, bottom four, and then the two lines on the top are unbroken, yang 
lines. And it's said that this suggests seeing from a distance and seeing into the distance. And here is how the ancient Chinese sage Confucius, Confucius, Confu, uh, how he um, expressed this particular image. He says, the wind moving above the earth, beholding the ancient kings inspected the provinces and territories to establish the right teachings. So that's the whole, that's giving the whole image. There's ancient kings and what do they do? They survey their provinces and they, uh, by doing that, they know what is happening in their lands and then they establish the right teachings. Uh, and this reminded me of how in the beginning of the Gita, Krishna says to Arjuna, behold Arjuna, these kurus. Behold, he says, look at all of these warriors. Um, by first beholding, by first looking at what is what is there, what is the immediate situation, uh, the raw reality. The noble ones are able to assess, they're able to judge what is to be done for the benefit of all. And what is of greatest benefit is that people g gain wisdom. Uh, and similarly, Krishna is urging Arjuna to behold the Kurus, and he wants Arjuna, and he also wants all of us, uh, to wake up to the reality of the situation in which we find ourselves. Um, and so Arjuna is looking, in this way I say he is uh, looking through the gateway of his senses. And what he initially sees horrifies him. He sees his own family members uh, standing in this army uh, ready to fight uh, against him. Mm. And um, eventually, however, with the lamp of knowledge, uh, he, Arjuna, and we will gain higher knowledge, directly comprehended, pratyakshavagama. Um, and then, of course, uh, that verse is also telling of right teachings to establish um, right action. Right teachings elevate and illuminate, whereas wrong teachings, however attractive they might appear, degrade and darken the soul. Uh, it's explained in the Yi Jing. Uh, the holy person is a larger than normal human being, as mighty and as prominent as a memorial gateway. Gateway, holy person as gateway, holy person observing, holy person being beheld. The changes, that's a translation for the name of this book, the Yi Jing, the changes, mixes these images together and makes the mix, our gateway, into this hexagram, into this particular vision of reality. 
and then I go on to explain how the Gita is reverberating. It's echoing back and forth uh, from the first chapter on about the idea or the motif of seeing and not seeing. And I point out that the very first verse is ironic because uh, Dhritarashtra, who is blind, is asking the question, what happened, what happened on this battlefield when my sons and the sons of Pandu gathered there? Uh, so he cannot see, he's depending on another for this vision. So anyway, like this, um, I'm making some, what I have to say are not, um, mm, not rigorous comparisons, they are loose comparisons, but the idea is uh, to open up, uh, to invite people to read the Bhagavad Gita and uh, to appreciate this wonderful, wonderful book of wisdom, uh, which Chinese people may take as they may adopt as one of their books of wisdom. <laughs> uh, they Chinese people appreciate wisdom, so we try to present the Gita as a book of wisdom in that way. Yeah, so this, uh, this book is getting closer uh, to coming, coming out. Um, okay, Hare Krishna, that was my mm, sh telling but not showing. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Okay, uh, shall we discuss Bhagavatam for some time? I was uh, I was with the Bhakti Vedanta course devotees this last week. Uh, there are about twenty devotees, very nice group, meeting every day, and. Uh, we were discussing from the ninth canto some interesting episodes after uh, the chapters about uh, Lord Rama. We were discussing chapters 13 through 18, which includes the story of Parashurama, which we also discussed uh, in the Monks podcast. I think some of you are familiar with this uh, interview that we do uh, with Chaitanya Charan Prabhu from Chopati Govardhaniko village. But I'm still coming back to our eighth canto discussion. We've been talking about the churning of the milk ocean and we're going rather we're, we're progressing <laughs> step by step. And uh, we came to the portion where the churning of the milk ocean is going on and Lakshmi Devi appears. Everyone is attracted to Lakshmi Devi and then Lakshmi Devi performs a kind of Svayamvara, self-choice, svaya means self, vara means choice, svayam vara, uh, choosing her husband, who of course, it's no surprise, is Lord Narayan, who you may remember was not, so, was not particularly anxiously waiting for her. So uh, some hint at one of the opulences of Narayan that of the six opulences, Aishvar Yasya Samagrasya Vir Yasya Yasya Sashriya Yana Vairagya Yoschaiva. Sannam Bhaga Itingana. These six opulences, one is Vairagya, 
and we all possess uh, we all possess all these opulences uh, in wh whatever ways that the Lord gives us to have them. So Lord Narayan exhibits them to an unlimited degree so that even when Lakshmi Devi comes, whom everyone is after, uh, he is like, okay, nice, you're back. <laughs> <clears throat> The demons are especially feeling left out and they get what you may call a uh, consolation prize. And the consolation prize is uh, again produced from the churning. They receive varuni. And what is varuni? Varuni is liquor. And they're very happy to get the liquor. Uh, and uh, because they're happy so peacefully, they can go on with the churning. Uh, speaking of that incident with Varuni, as we were preparing for the discussion uh, in the ninth canto, uh, which involved in one of the later chapters, a story of Devayani, the daughter of Shukracharya. And it's mentioned in the Bhagavatam ever so briefly, without any explanation, that Devayani had been cursed previously to uh, be prevented, although she was from a Brahmin family, she was a a Brahmani, she would not be able to uh, marry a Brahmin. And then there's no explanation of why she's not able, why that curse happened. So the, the explanation is given in uh, the full story in the Mahabharata, in the first, in the Adi Parvan, uh, when in the competition that goes on perpetually between the devas and the asuras, fighting that goes on, the asuras had one advantage. And this advantage was that when they were killed, they could be brought back to life by Shukracharya. Shukracharya had a mantra a Sanjeevani mantra. He would simply chant this mantra and the demons would come back to life. So of course the devas wanted to also have this mantra, but how to get it? How to get this mantra from Shukracharya? So what do they do? Uh, Brihaspati, who is the head priest of the devas, the sort of equivalent of uh, Shukracharya, uh, Brihaspati's son, Kacha, is given the task to go and join in with uh, the Asuras to become a student, to become a disciple of Shukracharya. Okay, so he goes and he uh, approaches Shukracharya. He bows to him very humbly and declares his desire to become his student. And Shukracharya is very happy and he accepts him as a disciple. And uh, Kacha is living in the household of Shukracharya who has a young daughter, Devayani. And Kacha and Devayani are often, they often spend time together, uh, just um, in a completely dharmic way, it's mentioned. Um, Kacha is a very dharmic Brahmin. And so he's always worshiping not only Shukracharya, but also Devayani. Um, but because they're uh, having so much interaction, 
Devayani becomes attracted and attached uh, to Kacha. Meanwhile, one day Kacha is in the forest tending the cows of his guru. And the Dhanavas, the, who are also students of Shukracharya, they know why Kacha has uh, taken up being a student. They know what he is after. And they don't want him to gain the Sanjeevani mantra. And so they murder him. They kill him in the forest and they cut him into, into, uh, into pieces. And they leave him in the forest. Eventually the cows wander back home because... Uh, but they come back without Kacha, and Devayani is naturally very much in anxiety, and she calls her father and says, Kacha has not returned. Something must have happened to him. <clears throat> Maybe he's been killed. So please do something. Save him. So, of course, Shukracharya is, um, he's very attached to his daughter. He wants to please her. So he says, all right, I will uh, invoke the mantra. And if he's been killed, then he will come back to life. So he invokes the mantra. And... Um, and Kacha comes back to life. He comes back into one piece and he comes out of the forest and everything is very nice. Um, but not for long because later again, he's in the forest and he's with the cows. And again, the Dhanavas come and again, they kill Kacha. And this time, they don't just chop him into pieces. They also take the small pieces of kacha and they grind, they grind up the pieces of kacha into powder. And then they take all this powdered, <laughs> powdered kacha and they burn it. And then they take this ashes, they take the ashes of kacha and they mix it into wine. I'm mentioning all of this because uh, we were speaking about uh, the varuni. Uh, they mix it into wine. And somehow or other, this wine is brought to Shukracharya. And Shukracharya drinks it. So now, kacha in the form of ashes mixed in wine is in the stomach of Shukracharya. And Devayani says, Daddy, Daddy, where is my kacha? You have to save him. <laughs> and kacha although he is in the condition that he's in, is able to call out from inside Shukracharya and say, I'm here, I'm here. If you can just chant that mantra again, I can come out. And Shukracharya understands that if he chants this mantra, he's going to come out, he's going to first come into one body again, and then he's going to explode the stomach, the body of Shukracharya, and this way Shukracharya will be killed. So Shukracharya explains to uh, Devayani 
And Dave Ayani says, well, that's not good because I don't want, uh, I love him, I love you both. I want you both. So what to do? <laughs> so then they come to a solution that first Shukracharya shall teach the mantra to Kacha while he's still within his stomach. And then he will chant the mantra, Shukracharya will chant it. And in this way, he will come back to life. He will kill Shukracharya, having killed Shukracharya, but himself come to life, he can then he, Kacha, can then chant the mantra and Shukracharya will come back to life. And Kacha says, okay, it's a great plan. And I promise I will do um, my duty. I, I'm a Brahmin, I follow Dharma. And so this is what they do. Um, and everyone lives happily ever after. No, they don't live happily ever after uh, because uh, just after all of this, Kacha says, okay, thank you very much. Now I have the mantra that I wanted. Uh, I'm, I'm going now. He wants to go back to the devas. And, and Devayani says, um, you can't go without me. <laughs> and Kacha says, uh, what are you talking about? And Devayani says, well, you know, my feeling is you are mine. So, and, uh, and like this, she gives her argument. And then Kacha says, uh, I'm sorry, but that's not gonna be possible uh, to, um, to marry you because uh, I consider you're you're the daughter of my guru and I worship you as I worship my guru. And besides that, um, we're actually now brother and sister because now I've also been born from your father. So this would not be proper. So I'm very sorry, but uh, uh, I'll have to say no. Devayani uh, doesn't like this response, so what does she do? She curses Kacha, and the curse is um, that he will not be able to... Uh, th this mantra which he has just obtained will not function for him. It will not have efficacy it will not have potency so he's he went to all this trouble to get the mantra and now he's not going to be able to use it and <clears throat> kacha says well oh that's not very nice uh, you've cursed me although i am completely following dharma very strictly i'm i haven't done anything wrong but still you've cursed me all right um since you've done this, uh, uh, made this curse, I will also curse you. And the curse is that you will not be able to marry a Brahmin. Uh, and besides, although I won't be able to use the mantra, I can give the mantra to someone else and they will be able to use it. <laughs> so Kacha uh, is, um, he's, He's okay that way. Anyway, this all comes back then to Devayani uh, because uh, she wants to marry Yayati. Uh, this is in the Bhagavatam. And she's explaining, I can't marry a Brahmin because I've been cursed, but I could marry you, Yayati, who has just saved her. She has been thrown into a well. That's another story. Um, She's been thrown into a well by one of her so-called friends. Hare Krishna. Anyway, uh, all of this is to say that the demons received what they wanted, uh, the Varani liquor, and then the 
uh, process of churning continues and finally the real nectar comes. And this is what everyone has been uh, endeavoring for, the Amrita. Uh, it comes, but it comes uh, in the hands, in a pot uh, of uh, the uh, avatar of Vishnu, uh, Danvantari. And Danvantari is described, he's very handsome, very charming. And we don't hear from Danvantari here. He is simply here and he's holding uh, the, he's holding a, a vessel, uh, the prized vessel of Amrita. But he is not able to hold it for very long. And why is that? Because uh, the Danavas, the demons, grasp it out of his hand. They, they steal it from him. They swipe it. They grab it out of his hands and run. And then they start arguing with each other. Who is going to get, who's going to get it first? I, I'm more important than you. No, I, it's, I, give it to me, give it. And they're fighting, fighting, fighting. And the weaker ones say, you know, we shouldn't take it all because we made a deal with uh, the devas. They should also get some. So in this way, they try to keep the bigger demons from taking all of it. And while all of this fighting back and forth is going on, the Lord intervenes. And this whole story of churning is, you can take it as a story of the Lord intervening in so many different ways. He's intervening uh, in so many different forms, uh, always to, to help in the process of churning. And now that the churning is done, he's helping in the process of distributing of that which is so much desired uh, by everyone. And his intervention now is in this very special form of Mohini Murti. And this is uh, chapter nine of Canto eight. Mohini Murti is so called because she is Mohini, she is bewildering and she is especially bewildering to the demons. I don't remember if it's in one of these purports, but uh, it is mentioned that Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains uh, that uh, Mohini Murti being the Lord himself appearing as in a female form is, um, he is all, the Lord is all attractive. And so when he appears in a female form, he is all attractive, even more attractive than Lakshmi. So, so when the, so when the uh, Asuras see Mohini Murti, they're so completely charmed by her that when she, tells them, you should not trust me. They think, oh, that's very funny. <laughs> oh, that's very funny. You're speaking uh, such funny jokes. She is telling them, I am actually a prostitute. And prostitutes cannot be, uh, cannot be trusted. Uh, one, one of verse number 10 says, O demons, as monkeys, jackals, and dogs are unsteady in their sexual relationships and want newer and newer friends every day, women who live independently seek new friends daily. Friendship with such a woman is never permanent. This is the opinion of learned scholars. Uh, and then Shugadev Goswami goes on to explain that this is her ironic speech 
which they take as joking, uh, which means although she's telling them, don't trust me, they trust her fully, which is a kind of double irony because, of course, it's the right thing to completely trust the Supreme Lord. So they're doing the right thing by trusting him. But of course, they're going to be cheated, excuse me, by the Lord. Just as Bali Maharaj, uh, when he was approached by Vamanadeep, he, he knew that he's going to be cheated. Shukracharya warned him that he's going to be cheated. And in effect, he said, I don't care if I'm going to be cheated. Uh, oh, Yoga Narasinga is pointing out, it's in uh, the purport to verse 18 that uh, this point is made. Thank you. And Yamuna is saying, it is described that Shukracharya is accepting everyone as a disciple, even the son of the enemy. Brihaspati is very choosy on whom he accepts as a disciple. Thus, Shukracharya, the guru of the demons, is described as a more merciful guru. Could you comment on this, please? I would just say there's different qualities of mercy um, to receive the mercy of the guru of the demons. Um, okay, that's very nice, but that means in general being trained how to be a good demon, it seems. So is that, um, is that what we want? Maybe not. Um, but it does point out the concern. Uh, it, it, it points, I would say, to the necessity for the potential disciple to be discerning uh, of qualification of the guru. And unfortunately, it can be the case that someone who is not qualified uh, as guru is perceived to be more merciful um, because he or maybe she uh, accepts disciples very easily and therefore must be qualified. I'm not saying that because someone accepts disciples more easily, that means they're not qualified. <laughs> But what I'm saying is it could be that uh, a potential disciple who is not really uh, ready to accept a guru, some uh, this potential disciple not qualified to be a, a guru, sorry, to accept a guru, uh, may be accepting someone as guru who is not qualified or less qualified on the basis of thinking, oh, he or she is very so merciful, so I will accept. Um, yeah, so that would be one consideration. Yeah, so uh, Mohini Murti is um, winning the trust of the Asuras by her charming speech. Uh, thereafter, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, having taken possession of the container of nectar, so they, they entrust her with the nectar, smiled slightly and spoke in attractive words. She said, my dear demons, if you accept whatever I may do, whether honest or dishonest, then I can take responsibility for dividing the nectar among you. And of course, they accept, uh, they accept this fully. And as a result, they, they become cheated. Um, 
And it goes on to describe how they prepared themselves, we might say from our perspective, for being cheated. Um, they um, first uh, fasted, they bathed, uh, they made offerings, uh, yagya offerings, charity, um, all kinds of nice, very Brahminical things, dressed themselves, and then they sat down ready to receive the nectar. And did they get the nectar? No, they didn't. Uh, Hare Krishna. <clears throat> The, the whole idea of getting the nectar, of course, is because they want to um, extend the period, the, they want to extend their lives, they want to live longer. And the subject of long life is, we may say, very much on everyone's mind, and especially these days in the time of uh, this very dangerous disease. Um, and I must admit, I'm surprised to see uh, devotees expressing that there is no pandemic. Mm, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I guess it depends on how you, how you uh, define a pandemic, but it looks very much like a pandemic to me, where Many people are getting a disease which um, is shortening their lives. They may, uh, it is very often because of um, other pre existing conditions or because of age. Um, and we are be being told to be cautious or to, to not take a vaccine and so on. I haven't taken any vaccine yet because opportunity hasn't come yet. Um, I may or may not, I'm w waiting to see, take advice from my doctor. Um, but, uh, I, um, but what I wanted to point to was an article that I found came across, has nothing to do with vaccines, um, but um, it's called Recovering Old Age. And the sort of subtitle or uh, byline says, COVID has laid bare, has opened up our warehousing attitude toward the elderly. Have we forgotten what aging is for? Uh, this is written by uh, two authors, Joseph Davis and Paul Scherz. And uh, he's writing this in the, or they are writing this in the context of um, the discussion that has gone on among doctors in hospitals where they found themselves in desperate situations of lack of equipment where they find they have to make choices or they're claiming they have to make choices whether to. Um, whether to save a younger person or an older person. And uh, they say, you know, we don't want to have to make such a decision, but we're forced to make such decision because there's X number of this and that equipment and there's Y number of uh, people. So we decide the person who's more likely to live longer, we're going to give them uh, the the medicine or the treatment and so on. And uh, these authors are calling attention to this to point out that uh, what's happening in this kind of calculation is pointing to a, a bigger problem of our society, and that is our general lack of understanding of value of aging in which um, the value that's put on age is simply measured in terms of time, how much longer uh, one may be able to live if one gets a certain treatment. 
Um, and so, yeah, they say, well, while allocating issues, sorry, well, allocation issues, the issue of who to give uh, treatment to, uh, put elderly per people on the COVID-19 bioethical agenda right from the start, aging itself as a critical part of the human experience has hardly been engaged at all. In a pandemic, diffi quote, difficult and heart-wrenching decisions may have to be made, uh, according to one official statement that was made by some institute. Um, and guidance in medical matters will not only reflect the immediate demands of care for the aged, but the quote, sort of society we want ours to be. What sort of society do we want our society to be uh, is very much the question of how older people are cared for is very much uh, a core to that question. What sort of society do we want to have? Uh, and that is also mentioned <clears throat> I believe it's in um, in our in our Vaishnav literature, and it's been uh, referred to in other ways as well by others. That uh, you measure the quality of a society by how they take care of the elder, the me, the the aged, uh, the women, and the children, and uh, one other category. Sounds like Manu Samhita, I don't remember now. Um, and they go on to say, our response to the pandemic does in fact reveal something critical about our society and how we understand aging. Specifically, how we refuse to acknowledge the unique circumstances of older adults and to grant them, the older adults, true moral agency. In a time of pandemic and a rapidly aging population, we find ourselves profoundly impoverished. If we want our society to be one that protects older adults and treats them as full social members, then we need not only ethical policies, but ethical frameworks in the fullest sense, guides to social practices and family relations and ways of life that will cease to exclude the old and reestablish our ties with them. This sort of article attracts me because I'm getting older. <laughs> and I'm also reading a book, uh, an anthropology. It's an ethnography of attitudes toward old age in India. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, anyway. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm already getting obsessive on the subject of old age. Um, this is just the beginning of this article, but uh, I think it's, it's interesting for us because it is something we, we all think about, whatever our age is. And uh, we think about it in relation to our elders, our parents, and so on. Uh, and I, I appreciate that uh, these people are writing and thinking about this subject. In any case, our time is passing. And oh, 
Um, one of you mentioned that it's Valentine's Day. I think that's, is that today? No, tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, so it was a nice um, meditation for Valentine's Day, thinking about Devayani and Kacha romance. Um, <clears throat> um, offering medicine, what if there's something impure in the medicine, like alcohol? Um, well, I think the principle is that one offers everything that one takes oneself. And then it's up to the Lord whether or not he wants to accept. But by offering, you're doing your part. And we may say that uh, the Lord, um, with your offering, you may offer an apology. <laughs> if, your medicine, if you have medicine that you have to have a medicine that um, has some alcohol in it, uh, then you offer an apology and you meditate at how the Lord doesn't need your medicine um, with or without alcohol. And if he is going to take the medicine, he can certainly extract it from the alcohol um, with no difficulty whatsoever. Ah, and Ritya Kishori has found uh, the article. If you want to read it, uh, she's given the link here. It's from the New Atlantis, which is a journal um, about, uh, especially about technology and how it, it's a, the emphasis is on philosophy, um, but uh, it's focused in particular on how we deal with technology in the modern world. Okay, um, so I think we can end there. Yeah, um, elder people are getting vaccines first, that's true. Um, um, this, what I was speaking of, was speaking about not the vaccine receiving or not, but about um, people in hospitals where there was just an overwhelming demand on, yeah, ventilation machines and so on. Although it's mentioned somewhere that now they're realizing these ventilators don't actually help. <laughs> they're, re they're reducing the use of the ventilators. Um, well, I didn't want to end on such a depressing subject. Um, let there be a bright week before us all in hearing and chanting and remembering Lord Krishna, uh, who is always full of ever-expanding uh, ecstasy. He is, after all, Sachit Ananda Vigraha, and we are his, his integral parts and parcels. So I will end there. Oh, and um, yes, thank you all for joining us. And next week we do have, Krishna willing, we will have a surprise guest, uh, an old friend of mine. And I think you will all be very happy to meet this person. So on that more upbeat note, I wish you a good day and rest of the day and all of next week. And Gaur Premanande Haribo. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Rinda Ki Jai Gaur Premanande Haribo. Haribo. Srila Sankshetra Maharaj Ki.